What I want to talk about today is what Julian Edelman was talking about. Larry didn't see it, so I'm going to recap it for anyone who didn't see it. Julian Edelman went on this uh, I Am Player podcast with former NFL wide receiver Brandon Marshall and was asked about what Martellus Bennett said on that same podcast a few months ago. If you don't remember, Martellus Bennett went on there and just eviscerated Jimmy and just said, you know, he can't win with a bitch at quarterback was the exact quote. And he was saying that basically, you know, in 2016, when Brady was uh, suspended, Jimmy played a couple games, got hurt, was supposed to play in the third game, practiced all week, shut himself down like day of the game. And Jacoby had Brissett had to play with a torn ligament in his thumb. And I guess, I guess essentially Jimmy lost the locker room that day. Their attitude was Tom would have played, you know, we're all hurt. What are you doing? Um, that was very interesting to me. I mean, what do you think of these like, vets who were part of that team coming out and publicly being like, yeah, that just didn't fly with us. What did Edelman, when he was asked about it, what did he say? He said, I, you know, I, I can understand why Marty would feel that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's football. And someone's like, well, well, was he really hurt? He's like, I mean, you were all hurt. It's football. I, I had broken ribs. You, you, you shoot this up. You, you sacrifice to play and he didn't do it. So Jacoby had to, because Jacoby was hurt too. I mean, maybe they're wrong. It just seemed interesting that the whole locker room seemed pretty. He said, like, you know, there were a lot of guys who were who were pissed. I was angry, frankly. And here's why. Maybe they've made up since then and, and worked it out. But clearly, to me, it seemed like Jimmy was never going to lead that team. Well, it's interesting because he did play hurt with the 49ers. Yes, he did last um, year. And, and he played, I would say, pretty well as far as I didn't see a dramatic drop off from the way he normally played to when he was hurt. So I'm not sure exactly what to make of that other than, you know, I, I, I definitely feel like when you lose the room, uh, it's time to go, but you know, who knows? I mean, a lot of that speculation, a lot of times there's a lot of personal animosity between players that have, you know, and the reasons for the, for the animosity always get kind of camouflaged in other excuses. So I'm not sure what to believe there. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem like they have an ax to grind. It just seems like they looked at him as a backup that they didn't necessarily ha have to treat with respect. Now, Jimmy never necessarily lost the locker room with the 49ers, but they traded for Trey, Lance, for Trey Lance. And I think it kind of gets glossed over why the Niners were out on Jimmy Garoppolo. And I, Although he did play through injuries last year. Remember 2020? I mean, he had a high ankle sprain and never came back. And I think, you know, a lot of people were injured that year. It was like the year of the injuries. Kittle came back. Jimmy Ward came back. A lot of people came back for meaningless games at the end and Jimmy didn't. And I don't know how, I wonder if we'll ever find out how people really felt about that because once he's gone and they start winning without him and they can prove to themselves, they don't need him anymore. Maybe there'll be some vets who talk like Martellus Bennett and Julian Edelman all of a sudden, like, yeah, you know, we didn't really appreciate it when he was practicing at the end of 2020, but not playing. I wonder. And there was also week four against Seattle this year when he got hurt and then went into halftime and then apparently alerted the coaches at the end of halftime when they were walking back out to the field that he wasn't going to play anymore. That's what Kyle said. Mm. Those are those are all interesting. I would I would say this too. The when the when the 49ers shut him down and he didn't come back, <clears throat> my read on that at the time was that they were concerned about him getting hurt and their inability to move him. And that, you know, it's it's almost impossible to move a hurt player in the NFL. So I I kind of read this that into it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, maybe that that might have been uh, the I always get the felt feeling that the, the club had as much say on that as Jimmy did. But maybe I'm I was reading that wrong from the outside. It's possible. I just remember at the time making a big deal about Kittle coming back. And I said he shouldn't come back. He should practice his little heart out, but not play. And Kittle was like, hey, Grant, I remember publicly. Was like, I heard what you I saw what you wrote. And I am going to play, I'm going to play my little heart out and do it just for you. And I remember the team was making a big thing. Like we're football players. This is what we do. I don't, it doesn't matter if we're eliminated from playoffs. This is what we do. We play football. We come back and play. And I wonder if that was like, well, your quarterback isn't necessarily doing that. So are there like two different standards here? Or are you taking a, a kind of a, are you sneak dissing your quarterback to say, to use what, what kids would say? Are you sort of implying that your quarterback isn't being a tough football player? Cause that's a sense. That's, that's exactly what Julian Edelman and, and Martellus Bennett said of that version of Jimmy Garoppolo five years ago. Well, you know, the, here's the one thing about the NFL, and there's no, there's a little saying in football. Every, you know, you get to a certain point in the year. Maybe it's week five, maybe it's week eight, maybe it's week ten. Everybody's, everybody's hurt. Tell me when you're injured, right? Kind of a thing. So, you know, 
everybody's got something they're playing with after, you know, four or five weeks of football. Uh, but, you know, don't play. You play if you're hurt. Don't play if you're injured. Yeah. And that's and that's a that's a All personal right. thing. I see what you mean. What's interesting is this was week three. Yeah. And the Patriot, the Patriots just were a very veteran team that was used to Tom Brady. And I guess they looked at Jimmy Garoppolo and he failed the first test. And that was it. That was it. And they still remember. It's amazing because I feel like the Niners look at him in a totally different way, although they are replacing him, too. And the injuries followed him. And that's kind of a you can't talk about Jimmy Garoppolo's career. It seems like anywhere without talking about the injuries. The injuries yeah. are a big part of his story. Did he shut himself down at the end of 2020? We'll never know. Did right. he shut himself down at the end of the uh, first half of the Seattle game this year? We'll never know. And isn't that inconsistent with what we saw this year with a guy playing with, you know, shoulder and thumb and all kinds of injuries? Yeah, he definitely gets credit for that. Two different injuries. Juice Man Jeremy says best camp, uh, best battle at camp going to be Sermon versus TDP for that RB2 spot. See, that that battle happens in preseason when there's tackling, in my opinion. Don't. I I think that may be an incorrect take. It might be TDP versus Mitchell for the starting spot. Could be. I mean, when you take a running back. They're all in the mix. Yeah. Then we take a running back that high, you figure he should be in the mix. Dre Barry says Edelman should focus on staying off the wow. <laughs> was he pop for that? I guess he was. was he? Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, I'm not sure if he knowingly, if he was knowingly or unknowingly or what it was, but yes. That's true. I'm just proud of him because he's Jewish and he's from the Bay. Go <laughs> I'm, I've interviewed his dad. His dad's awesome, man. Owns his own uh, auto body shop on the peninsula. That's really cool. 